Welcome. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, you may want to uh, stop the video and take a moment to prepare a candle or even your Advent candles for this time of lighting. We begin. The light shines in the darkness. We come to worship, seeking the love born among us in Christ Jesus. Shine into our lives and in our world this Advent. Renew our trust in your undying love. We join our voices, our hearts, our minds in the singing of the Advent hymn, Hope is a Star. In this time of worship, we come together in prayer, the prayers of adoration and confession. Emmanuel, God with us, we praise you for your presence throughout the amazing universe you have made. The shining stars sing your praise, which echoes in the depth of space. The smallest snowflake flake and a baby's tiny fingers reflect your intricate love from, for the details of each and every life. In Jesus Christ, you were born among us, one of a kind, yet one with a kind, to show us how your great love is lived out day by day. Inspire us with your loving spirit as we move through Advent toward Christmas Day, so that our celebrations of love made flesh in Jesus will share the presence of your love with those who need it most. So may we live the praise we offer to you, Emmanuel, God with us, now and forever. Lord of love, we confess we sometimes find your love daunting. You called Joseph to honor his love for Mary, even when custom called him to break his engagement. We confess custom has a hold on us too, and challenging expectations for love's sake makes us nervous. You call us to love our neighbor, but we resist your call if our neighbors annoy us. You call us to love our enemies too, but that seems impossible in these contentious times. Forgive us for loving only in the safest situations. Dare us to love as Jesus loved, so he will be born again in us. Receive the good news. Receive it in love. With grace and great mercy, God forgives what we have confessed 
and offers us new life in Christ. Know that God's steadfast love is yours this day and share that love with friend and enemy alike so that the power of such love can change the world. We turn now to a scripture reading from the Gospel of John. Our New Testament reading is from John chapter 3, verses 16 to 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you grew up in the church and particularly went to Sunday school, the foremost verse you would have learned was John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. This verse seems to keep things in a fairly simple perspective, and it is a good place to start when learning about God's deep love for people by sending Jesus to us, God in human form. But context, as always, is important. The story that comes before this statement is about a conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. The conversation leaves a knowledgeable and learned Nicodemus confused and perplexed. The verses that follow this statement are equally difficult. It continues hopefully with the words, Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Then it gets challenging. Speaking of condemnation, judgment, evil deeds, and hate, these words are powerful. They make us want to turn away and skim over them. These words are spoken about each of us. There is a dialogue of opposites, light and darkness. We often speak in these ways, light and dark, day and night, male and female, heaven and earth, true and false. And this is the contrast that the passage is making. Jesus is the light that has come into the world, illuminating the darkness. But what kind of light is Jesus? What darkness does Jesus' light reveal? The darkness that is written about is deeds of evil. We heard people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. If you're like me, you don't want to think of yourself as evil or doing evil deeds. We think of evil as sinister and dark. Our viewing of programs and videos on television or streaming services, streaming services, services and social platforms shape our view of evil. We think of murder, sexual and physical assault, as well as a host of other actions as evil. Yet our exposure to all of this on a near daily basis, in that exposure, we have become desensitized to the horrors of it all. For most of us, this is what evil looks like. But what are the lesser evils? None of us would like to think about gossip, adultery, or stealing as evil. They are just bad things that people do. If one looks more broadly, are we complicit in the oppression and the exploitation of others by our attitudes, purchases, or complacency? Does injustice move us to working toward the transformation of the world, or are we content to read about it or view it and not be moved by the suffering of others? What does it mean to believe in Jesus? Is it just agreeing that he was a good guy and a great example? Or is it something more? Is it about changing the world and shining the light that is Jesus into it? 
Professor Samuel Cruz writes, to change the world or save it requires a process that ends hate, injustice, oppression, and re replaces it with justice, compassion, mercy, love, equality, etc. However, verses 9 through 21 tell us that some choose hate over light, evil deeds over good deeds, and therefore they reject the light of the Son of God. Others, however, agree with Jesus' quest to change or restore the world to its original intent, from a world full of evil and injustice to a loving, just, and caring world. Therefore, for John, believing in Jesus has more to do with what people believe regarding evil, hate, exploitation, and injustice, rather than an esoteric religious conversion. In other words, it is not enough in, to, it is not enough in the Gospel of John to just love Jesus. That love, that belief in, belief in Jesus, is belief in his teachings that are meant to transform us and transform the world. Of course, we know nothing, or that, that nothing is as black and white as the light and darkness spoken about in the scripture. There are always shades of light and dark, shadows where the light is dim, or darkness where the light cannot seem to reach. Those who struggle with mental illness or suicidal thoughts know how darkness can snuff out the light. Those who are blind or whose sight is, as we say, growing dim, know that light and dark are realities they struggle with, and it has nothing to do with evil. Skin colors range from deep black to pasty white. This has nothing to do with good or evil. Yet God so loved the world, and yes, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. And God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Yet what we believe about Jesus means something. We are imperfect people striving to be more like Jesus. And if that is the case, we continually need to be aware of injustice, of where mercy is lacking, where hate abides, and be working toward changing things where people are cared for compassionately, where hate has no place, and justice is the rule, especially for those on the margins of society, those who feel helpless, lost, and forgotten. It means trusting that Jesus is the light of the world, that God loves the world and is working through us in the power of the Holy Spirit as we grow in understanding and faith. I recently read the words of a faithful Christian physician who was a friend and lived here in Thunder Bay. He wrote, Christian principles must guide everything we do or say or think. There's no halfway. You either are or you are not. We must go the whole way and have the golden rule as our guide 100% of the time. This is not to say that I consider myself or anyone else perfect. I have never met a perfect man or woman, and I don't anticipate that I ever will. But perfection should be our aim. Perfection of love, justice, mercy, compassion, and grace. These are not fully attainable in our lifetime, but we strive for them as Jesus taught us. He is the light that illumines our way and our living. Yes, to love Jesus and believe in him can be as simple as just knowing that Christ was born a babe, lived, died, rose again, and ascended to the right hand of God because of love. But to live in order that the world might be saved through Jesus means that we have a part in the ongoing transformation of the world. God chooses to use each of us, as imperfect as we are, to change the world, to show others God's love, and to point others to Christ, whose teachings were about healing, feeding, forgiving, and freeing people. It is a personal relationship, but one that reaches out into community and is lived in community, the community of the church locally and worldwide. Our relationship with Jesus, our believing in Jesus, exposes the evil in our lives, in systems, and in structures. We look for the truth that Jesus taught so that each day and in the end, it can be said, those who do what is true come to the light, 
so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. And that is, that is something to hold on to. Our belief is in Jesus. Our motivation is that our deeds are done in God. In this time of Advent, as we prepare once again to hear the story of the Christ child born to be God with us, we know that we live our lives in the hope of Christ, the peace of Christ, the joy of Christ, and in the light of Christ, which is love, the love of God for us. A love so expansive that it moved God to send love as a light into a world of darkness. May the light of God's love shine in and through us today and every day, so that others may come to know the love that is there for them in Christ. May the star of Bethlehem lead us to the light of love. Amen. We turn our hearts and minds toward God as we pray the prayers of the people. Come, Christ Jesus, be a guest in our hearts and our homes this Christmas. Enter our lives today with your blessing. We are grateful for the wonder you bring into a world so full of complaint and criticism. Draw near to us in friendship and faithfulness so that in this season of celebration, we may know your presence and can sing with all your people. Jesus, Lord of love, we open our hearts to you. Come, Christ Jesus, be our guide through the darkening days and the chill of winter. Show us the way to wisdom and gratitude. We are thankful for the kindness we know in friends and good neighbors, in warm houses and warm smiles. Encourage us to reach out to those who need your embrace and ours so that together we may sing of your presence. Jesus, Lord of love, we open our hearts to you. Come, Christ Jesus, be our hope in the uncertain times in which we find ourselves. Touch us with your healing and grace. We remember before you those we know and those known to you alone who are living with loss or illness this season, those who are facing depression or discouragement, and any who will find it hard to be merry this year. Shine the light of your courage and comfort into their lives so that we may sing together in your love. Jesus, Lord of love, we open our hearts to you. Come, Christ Jesus, be our king and claim your rightful place in our hearts. Our world is struggling for the justice and mercy you bring. Draw near to all leaders and all citizens working for peace and justice. Encourage honorable action and cooperation on all sides. Give hope to people under oppression and those who live with fear or hunger day by day. Hasten the day when the world's people will live as neighbors, reconciled in your truth and freedom, so that all may know the joy we sing. Jesus, Lord of love, we open our hearts to you. With voices united in love and loyalty, we offer in the following prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This Sunday, we celebrate the advent of love, embracing us in Jesus Christ. Think of your gifts as seeds of that love which can plant, which we can plant in the world God loves for Christ's sake. If you consider St. Andrew's your church, regardless of where you live, or would like to learn more about St. Andrews, get involved in our ministry and work, or make a donation toward uh, the work that we do here, uh, then please visit our website at standrewspres-tbay.ca. We close with the hymn, the Christmas hymn, Christians Awake.
Go in love this day to greet friend or enemy, neighbor or stranger with the warmth and wonder of Christ Jesus in your smile. And may the all-forgiving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the all-inspiring love of God, and the all-embracing communion of the Holy Spirit be yours this day and in each day to come, now and evermore. Amen.